Hi guys, it's Chris with Microsoft with another exciting episode of Windows Server 2012, the What's New In series. Uh, this is going to be the first in a number of videos that we're going to have that are concerning Active Directory. Uh, we're going to be starting off by uh, turning DC2 into a domain controller but we're on a Windows 8 machine to do this. We're using Server Manager. I'm running at 800 by 600 resolution to make this video look a little bit better. Uh, your experience is going to look a lot better than what I'm doing in here, uh, but for the ability to kind of get a little better video experience, that's what you're going to see. Um, kicking off the uh, capability to promote a new DC is no longer done through the DC promo operation that we've done in the past. In fact, if I were to switch over to Contoso DC2 and just try to kick that off and log in, Let me put this up in the window so that we can see it. DC promo, as you can see, brings up this error. Sorry, I'm not here anymore. Please come see me in Server Manager. So, the reason this is done is because we've added in several different new capabilities, including remote promotion. So, from a Windows 8 machine, I can make DC2 a domain controller. It's going to come in two steps, just like with DC Promo. The first step was to make sure the binaries were there. That's for step here, too. So we're going to give it the Active Directory binaries. So I'm going to say Active Directory Domain Services and all of the associated tools. I'm also going to kick off the DNS install too because I like to have DNS on all my domain controllers. I'm going to go ahead and click Next and Next, Next. It's going to give me a little bit of information about DNS. Um, some uh, information on the previous page also for Active Directory uh, Domain Services. Go ahead and click through this wizard. Do not have to restart the destination server because all we're doing right now is the first step. Just like with DC Promo, first step, get the binaries on. Second step, promote the DC. So this is step number one, just getting the binaries for Active Directory on. So we're going to kick that off. Now, what you didn't see in this wizard is what you would have seen if this was the first time you were adding a 2012 server into an Active Directory um, environment that you've already got up and running. Obviously, this usually requires you to do an AD prep and, and prepare the forest, prepare the domain for this. Uh, this is uh, <laughs> this is the same error I got yesterday. Let me uh, go ahead and kick this guy bounce them real fast uh, while we're talking about this other problem so let's go bring it up keep a little eye on it while it's restarting and then I'll pause the video once I've made this other point um, what you would have to do in the past was actually promote or uh, uh, prep your domain this now happens automatically you'll you'll get this one extra little screen here uh, during the promotion which will uh, I'll show you where this is uh, where this is at, it's uh, just kind of telling you, hey, I need to get your schema up to the latest version. All right, so he's finished his little reboot, so let's kick off our little roll install again. Get back up to the place where we were a moment ago. Active Directory Domain Services, DNS, next, 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 install. Okay, and as before, um, this is not tied to the Windows servicing infrastructure, so I actually can click close. In this case, I'm not going to do that uh, because there's going to be a nice little shortcut to step two, which is promoting the DC. So we'll, uh, we'll be able to see that even if I do accidentally click close. In fact, maybe it would be a good idea for me to do that after the feature install actually completes. Uh, so you can see how you could get to the promotion wizard if you ever did uh, accidentally uh, go ahead and close this wizard out. So let's let this complete and then I'll show you the two places you can kick off step two. All right, didn't actually have to pause the video for more than about a second and a half. That was kind of a waste of a click. So I'm going to go ahead and accidentally close, although you did see that there was a link there that said promote this server to a mid-domain controller. It's also available by clicking on the flag and seeing right here, promote the server to a domain controller. Either one of those that you click 
we'll bring you here. All right, so what we're going to be doing is adding a domain controller to an existing domain. It's going to be the contoso.com domain. And you can see that uh, it's doing its kind of Cylon brain thinking thing going on here. This, depending on your environment, and this is a lab environment, obviously, this might take uh, upwards of about 60 seconds as it goes through and uh, does some queries against the environment just to uh, see what it comes up with. While we wait for that to get there, let me pull this little guy back up again. All right, so you can see in the promotion wizard, uh, under paths, this uh, screenshot that I have here is after paths, it's preparation options. Uh, in our case, we're just a 2012 environment, so this was not a, uh, a necessity. But as you can see, what it's telling you is, hey, I need to go ahead and prep the, uh, the domain. I have to uh, prep the forest for you. Uh, AD prep just happens. It, it's just part of it. First time you do one, it's just going to uh, go ahead and take care of that for you. It's not going to warn you. It's not going to have an alert. It doesn't have any red or yellow or uh, warnings. It's just letting you know, hey, just FYI, I am going to prep your schema for you. Uh, the, the reason that this is no longer a really huge deal is uh, we just haven't seen the kind of problems with this that everybody has always been terrified about. People have always been very afraid of uh, the forest prep and domain prep operations with their schema, but the reality of it, we have seen almost no issues. In CTS, they went back, or that's customer technical support, they went back looking for problems uh, with people extending their schema, and we just really haven't seen that. Uh, so we've, we've, we've taken what was really what we thought of as a scary process and we're just kind of making it automatic now where where is this important this could be important because what do you have to be in order to extend the schema well you need to be a schema admin if you're adding your first domain controller uh, into the environment and you're not a scheme administrator you're going to get an error. Uh, so typically you want to make sure there are no members of the schema administrators group. That is best practice. Do not have people in there. Uh, you can as a domain admin add people in as you need to modify or maintenance the schema. Don't need to do uh, the addition then you don't need to be a member of the group. So just keep that group empty. However, if you're following best practices the first time you do this, you are going to get an error that says, I'm sorry, I wasn't able to do this um, at this time. And so uh, you'll then need to rectify that and then rerun the, uh, the promotion wizard. Oh, really fast, something else I forgot to mention. Um, this yellow bang with the yellow the little white flag is going to appear with this promote this server to a domain controller on any server that has this added into server manager in this case I'm over here on Contoso DC2 I'm directly on that that local server so whether remote promotion or local promotion um, I'm going to see this link for anybody who's actually managing that server so that's one of the reasons that the binary installation and the wizard are kind of separate is because of the ability to do this uh, as a remote promotion it's not an automatic that it links straight over to the uh, to, to, to the other wizard okay so uh, switching back over here to the Windows 8 machine so that we can do a remote promotion uh, I need to go ahead and give it some credentials here so we're going to do this with my favorite NASCAR driver Kyle Busch um, we're going to need to give it a directory services for Sorvo password uh, since I did select DNS, DNS is already checked here global catalog is already checked here um, as soon as it finishes doing its refresh operation you'll see where we can modify the GC piece but if you're going to be a DNS uh, role you're going to be uh, automatically checked right here. I'm going to go ahead and put this in a site if I have a site to put it in. This is a lab. We don't have sites here. Well we've got one but that's it. Alright so that's the same thing we saw on 08R2. It's a single domain environment. We don't really need it. These are options you would never have seen anywhere except if you had run DC Promo with the advanced switch on it. IFM or Install from Media gives you the capability to use a, a backup of another domain controller to, uh, to, to, to do your promotion. Mostly applicable to uh, low bandwidth type of uh, scenarios, branch office scenarios. I can also forcefully push it to a domain controller in the environment where uh, 
Uh, one thing that's really neat about this new wizard is that all of the stuff is exposed in it. So this is kind of really cool right here, this view script. So I ran through this in the GUI, but I can actually export this out and take this into PowerShell if I needed to do this multiple times. So if I, uh, if I, if I need to promote this guy again at some point in time, or I need to promote a handful of other servers, I could actually look at that script. It's a good way to learn some of the PowerShell commands. I'm going to go ahead and do this next button. What's going on right now is it's verifying prereqs. It's actually running through a handful of tests. For, for a fairly uh, a good amount of time now, you'd every once in a while get in this weird kind of limbo period uh, where a domain controller thought it was promoted, but the rest of the domain did not. It thought it was a DC, and they didn't, or vice versa. It didn't think that it had actually been promoted to a DC, but the rest of the domain did. Uh, you usually end up having to flatten the box and then doing a metadata cleanup on it to get past that. Uh, so this is now going out and checking for the most common reasons for those failures. If we pass, we get the install button. If we don't, we can go back, read, hey, why didn't this work, and then rerun the prereq check so we don't have to go through the whole wizard again. When I click install, it's going to actually start making this a domain controller, and when it's finished, it will automatically time itself down from 10 seconds and it'll it'll reboot. If I was sitting on that machine directly, I would, uh, I would actually see the countdown begin. In fact, I could switch over here to DC to, we could go ahead and log it on just so that we can see that little countdown timer uh, kick off. I'll just kind of jump back and forth here between the two so client. So configuring it to host, replicating. Uh oh, we failed. Did not replicate. Not enough storage is available to complete this operation. I think I actually know what's causing this problem. Um, going to give it one extra quick attempt to do this from the uh, server itself. If this uh, doesn't work, it's actually something I caused the problem, so uh, I'll fix the issue. I'm going to have to roll back. Yeah, so he's in that limbo zone in the middle. This is the result of some playing around with my virtual machines. Uh, from before, it's you're throwing a system dot out of memory exception. Normally, you see this when a process actually exceeds its virtual address space. It's not actually out of memory. Um, we can see that in Task Manager. Uh, I actually created this problem. So, what I'm not going to torture you uh, watching me having to uh, create this issue. So, you can see we've got we've got still uh, about. 63 megs available, so plenty, plenty of RAM to complete a DC promo operation here. So uh, let me fix this real super duper fast. We'll come back and we'll finish this promotion operation. Okay, Doug. I uh, reverted everything to snapshot just in the interest of time. I uh, got to the end of the add roles and features wizard for uh, Contoso DC2 on the Windows 8 machine, Contoso Client 1. I uh, decided to actually stop here instead of clicking close this time so it could see us launching the wizard from the other way. That's using this hyperlink. Instead of using the one here with the flag where it says promote this, this is the other place right here. Promote it. As you can see, it launches the same wizard. And again, you would see uh, these options no matter where you, uh, no matter where you were. As long as you're on something that's running uh, running server manager and you have Contoso DC2 in this case uh, added as a server that you're managing or on the local machine obviously uh, then you would see this exact uh, type of thing. Alright so And we were right about here. Prerequisites. Yeah, while that's actually validating the prerequisites, let's jump back over to DC2 and change its screen resolution a little bit so we can actually see this thing in the window. That was done before, but of course reverting to a snapshot makes it 
go back to the original screen resolution. So we're going to list all modes, 800 by 600. Okay, okay. keep changes. Click OK. And hop over here to this. Click Install. And it's going to kick off this time, so move back over. There we go. Now I just want to make sure that I where I can kind of toggle between that and Contoso client one. There we go. Yeah. So we're now we're we're into it pretty well. Now it says you're about to be signed off because the process is completed over here. And it does a 10 second countdown. At the end of that, this begins to restart. Contoso Client 1 sees, hey, everything is successfully promoted as a domain controller. And we've got a brand new shiny Windows Server 2012 DC. So in the next episode, we're going to continue this uh, discussion with how to remove. As DC Promo does not work anymore, um, that is a very important part. So obviously getting some understanding of how to add a new DC, that's important. But knowing how to remove one, uh, also very important. So anyway, guys, this has been Chris with Microsoft. As always, thank you very much for watching. If you, if you found anything about this useful, please give it a like. Uh, just you know, type in the little, uh, click on the little thumbs up thing. Uh, they're in YouTube and feel free to subscribe to, uh, subscribe to my channel would love to have another uh, subscriber if, if um, any of this seems interesting to you my blog is at 9z.com it's real easy to remember it's just the last number and the last letter of the alphabet dot com um, anyway that's got links to my Facebook my LinkedIn and my Twitter so again thanks for listening and I'll see you guys in the next episode